What's up, Team Upcast? Jonathan Upcast here, and it's time for another resort review. This is the video series where we go to a brand new ski resort, we absolutely rip it, we shred it, we explore it, we see what it has to offer, then we come back here and we're gonna give it a score from zero to 100. Now, the way we're gonna get that score is by going over 10 categories. Each category is gonna get a score from zero to 10. Now, zero is not applicable, meaning they don't have it at all. One is terrible, five is average, and 10 is best in the world. Now, these are the rules we play by, this is just how we're gonna judge these resorts, but it doesn't mean it's a bad ski resort if it gets a bad score. That's why I'm gonna tell you guys who the ski resort is for as well. So hit the like button, let's jump into today's video, Hallison Hill in Steamboat, Colorado. Now, Hallison Hill has an elevation of 7,136 feet, a vertical drop of 440 feet, 50 skiable acres, and gets an average of 150 inches of snow a season. And a quick side note, Hallison Hill is the oldest ski resort in the United States, which is pretty cool. Because on top of that, it also has the most Olympic athletes every single Olympics because they have a bunch of ski jumps and stuff on the resort. It's insane. Now lift prices, how expensive is it to come right at Hallison Hill and at $25 for the day. This might be the cheapest resort in Colorado, which is absolutely insane. So I gave them a nine when it comes to lift prices. The only thing that's better than $25 is free, I would say. So yeah, $25 for the day, that's nuts. Now lodging, ski in, ski out. Can you sleep on Hallison? And you can't, they don't offer any lodging. So they get a zero for lodging. Now ease of access, how easy is it to get here? Now you can fly into Steamboat, but that's gonna take some money. And if you're doing that, you're probably going to Steamboat, not Hallison. So if you're coming from Denver, you're looking at over a three hour drive. You do got to go through the Eisenhower Tunnel, which is pretty gnarly. And then you got to get over Rabbit Ears Pass, which is a pretty gnarly pass. It gets a lot of snow. You guys got to be careful on Rabbit Ears. So when it came to ease of access, I did give them a four for ease of access. Now, I know what you're wondering, Jonathan, why did you go ride Howlson Hill instead of going to Steamboat or anything like that? And that's because we have a goal to ride every ski resort in the United States. And you guys can track our progress by going to resortskimaps.com. Now, this is a resort map of every resort in the United States. Every single green guy, you can click on them and watch the video there because that's where we have gone. And so you can see all of our videos at that ski resort as well as the other ones nearby it. Now, if you click on a red guy, nothing's going to pop up because we haven't been there yet. So click the top right hand corner. You can see our schedule for the upcoming ski season. That way, if you know we're coming to your ski resort, you can take time off of work, skip school, do whatever you need to do to show up at the mountain the same time as us so we can rip and tread with you guys because we absolutely love riding with the locals. The locals not only make the vlogs better, but they make the resort review better as well because you guys are showing us all the cool places to ride, where to go, things like that. So thank you to all the locals that do show up and show us around. You guys are incredible, but also guys, check out resortskimaps.com. It is the coolest place to plan any trip, anything you want to do with skiing and snowboarding. Check out all the resorts in the United States. You can do that at resortskimaps.com. Dot com. Now lifts, we gotta get up the mountain and they have one chairlift and three surface lifts to get up there. The main lift being a T-bar or platter surface lift that goes right up the middle. Kind of meant more for skiers, but they do have a two-seater chairlift. They do not run at night. They do have night skiing as well. But the surface lifts and the chairlift, they're kind of old, they're not fancy. They do they all work. They're gonna get you up the mountain. But so when it comes to the lifts, I gave them a two for the chairlifts. Now runs, they do have 17 runs to get you down the mountain, but how sick are they? They're pretty fun. One run had like all these log jibs in it and stuff. That was a really fun run. And it's a steep little hill. Like you, you definitely can bomb down it. I know they like to do ski races there because of how steep it is. But overall, when it came to runs, I gave them a three for the runs. So you got variety, but they're short. 440 vertical feet, come on. Now park, I, you know I love the park. I wanna shred the park and they had a park. They had a specifically two jumps and then they had a couple of like boxes. It, it wasn't great. They weren't built the best. Uh, you had to like, charge to hit the jump. It was insane. So I gave them a one for the park. Kind of a terrible park, but those log jibs were sick. Now, if you want everyone to know your party, Muckhouse, or just want to support the dream, consider snagging Evolution sticker. We do have a ski version for all the skiers out there. But you grab the sticker, throw it on the side of your helmet, let everyone know you are part of Team Muckhouse, and then I can say what up to you guys on the mountain. Yo, little dude, that is a sick sticker. What's up? That's the sickest sticker. What's your name? As well as it supports the dream, it's how we fund all this traveling. Everything we do is you guys snagging the merch, whether it's the hats, the stickers, any of it, guys. All of our merch, guys, is linked down below. And if you do snag it, tag me on my Instagram, and I'll give you guys gear and sticker shoutouts in my my vlogs. Now food, we're gonna get hungry. We're gonna wanna eat on the mountain. And they actually do have lodge food that you can get, but it's like the equivalent of like a high school football game lodge food. I'd say below what a typical ski resort is offering. So I gave them a three when it came to food.
Now views and scenery, you're not on the highest hill out in that area. You do have this really cool view of Steamboat when you're on the mountain, but overall the views and scenery are not epic or gnarly or taking your breath away. So I gave him a three when it came to views and scenery. Now employees, we don't cover snow conditions because East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, as well as early late season, the snow conditions can vary. It's very different, it's inconsistent. So we cover employees because an employee can absolutely make your day on the mountain or they can absolutely ruin your day on the mountain. Like we had at the Keystone incident, you can check out the Keystone video right here, as well as you can have employees just go above and beyond and just give you a 10 out of 10 experience. So that's why we cover employees. And when it came to House and Hill, we have kind of gone twice and both times we're kind of netting like a five and average for the employees. No one's doing anything above and beyond. No one's doing anything below. I know the ski resort is ran by the city of Steamboat, which is really cool. But overall, yeah, everyone's chill. Everyone's doing fine. Like no, nothing above and beyond. I would say more leaning towards a four and then a six though. Now the last category though, would I go back to because if I want to go back to ski resort, why would I recommend it to you guys? And when it comes to House and I give them a three on the would I go back. I'm not like gonna go from my house to house and even though I live kind of close to it because it's it's meh you know I'd rather go to Steamboat if I'm gonna be in Steamboat but if I'm gonna be in Steamboat for multiple days Ah, sure, why not? Let's just go do a quick day at house and like have some fun mix it up a bit So uh, yeah, that's what I'd say for the would I go back at three I know what you're wondering, what's the score from zero to 100? What did Hallison Hill get? And they got a score of <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> a 33, which is a below average score, but it's a unique tiny ski resort. You know, you can go there and have some fun. It's cheap. So if you don't have a lot of money, you can go to this ski resort. But who is this resort for? Obviously the Olympic ski jumpers, the people that want to learn how to ski jump and ski racers. That's kind of more who this resort is for, but the locals as well, you know, the young kids can go rip after school or stuff like that. So that's who House and Hill is for. And with that team up guys, thank you so much for shredding with me today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you tomorrow in our video. It is daily on this snowboard channel.